Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Trap on the Boomer Bus channel, Bears podcast by a Bears fan. I'm your host, Terry, and I have a lot to say. It's a big day. I got a lot of things to say. I'm real hyped up. But um, the first thing I do want to say is that I would hope everybody listening and participating in conversation is a Bears fan. And that as a Bears fan, we want to see what's best for the Bears. And that should be the core of our conversations and our ideas. And so if that is the case, then we can engage. I can engage with you. You can engage with me. No problem. Even if you have a different idea than mine, I can understand that uh, as long as we're trying to get to the same goal. But what I will say is that if you plan on coming at me, commenting, email, tweeting, and whatever, at least have listened to what I've already said. <laughs> at least have listened to it fully and understand what I was saying. Because more times than not, I feel somebody, when they come at me, starts off with something that is completely against what I said. And so that already just turns the conversation sour for me. So I would just ask that one simple thing, you know, reading is fundamental as they say, so is listening. So, so is those listening skills. Uh, make sure you heard what I said throughout the entire time. And uh, also, as I said early on, when I first started this channel, I, I definitely have my ideas, uh, but I'm, I'm looking for a higher level of conversation. I'm always going to have a higher level of conversation. And so if you're looking just for the headline news or the, the, the media's narrative, this isn't going to be the best place for you because I'm going to go deeper than that. And if you say something that's surface level, I'm going to challenge you to go deeper than that. That's what I believe. In. I'm sorry. I know football on a deeper level. And so especially once we get into actual football, uh, I'll definitely be speaking on a deeper level, but um, that's just how it is for me. That's that's the type of way I want. I don't want the surface level radio talk, ESPN talk. I want to go deeper than that. And so if you're going to come for me, <laughs> that's fine. If you want to discuss, debate, that's fine. Just make sure you actually got the facts correct and not working off assumptions of what you think I meant or said. So there we go. Anyway, with all that being said, we got Allen Robinson, everybody. Allen Robinson has agreed in principle, more than likely, is going to become a bear. And so the first thing I'll definitely say, uh, because uh, y'all heated up that last video uh, or the last episode, and I appreciate that, but some people kind of misinterpreted me saying that, uh, you know, I didn't want Allen Robinson. And so... To clarify, even though I made myself pretty clear, I feel like I said I'm fine with going after Robinson and getting Allen Robinson. I think he's a talent. And so my only issue is that I don't want to break the bank for him. I don't want to basically I don't want to overstretch our resources trying to compete with other people to get him and that I would be perfectly happy getting him on a decent level deal. And so as it turns out, we uh, got him at a pretty good deal. So overall, I, I think the deal is good. Uh, I think we didn't, uh, even though we had money, we didn't uh, overextend ourselves, uh, making him the highest pay receiver, anything crazy like that. But what I will say is that when the leaves kind of shake out, you can see that we were most likely one of the higher bids for him. And we don't know. I don't know him, so I can't tell you he took the highest deal possible. But you can tell that whatever the Jags were offering him, which they were trying to bring him back, uh, they had a number. And from what we heard between Marcus Lee and him, they had a number that they weren't going over. From what we heard from Allen Robinson prior to free agency, that he was seeking more than the one year deal. And I know a lot of fans wanted to give him a one year prove yourself deal, but that's, of course, players aren't trying to look for that. So he felt that the teams that came out and gave him a multi year deal were going to be the bigger, uh, the better choices. And so if you look at what we gave him three years, 40 million, uh, about 25 guaranteed or so, I still think that's probably one of the higher numbers that people were offering him. Uh, so our price was raised up, 
but I don't think that's out of the comfortability that I'm uh, willing for him, especially for him, because Sammy Watkins made more money. Um, but Sammy's history of production and injuries scare me a lot more than Allen Robinson. And so I think Allen's 25 million is, is decent because again, had he not had the ACL, you'd be talking about a lot more money. So I think he understood that he wasn't going to get as much as he could have got, but we also understood that we had to pay more than the rest of the market was willing. And so I'm cool with it. Now I was going to do a video kind of playing GM and I end up not doing it um, because I had other stuff to do. But one of the things I was going to say is that if I was the GM, I would be attacking a three-year deal with Robinson with this exception. It would be a one-year guarantee with a two-year team option at the end of next year. And we don't know the details of the deal, so it could look something like that. And I would praise Ryan Pace. But uh, more than likely, it's not that. But that's something I would want. And I think G- more GMs need to add that to their repertoire in the NFL. We see it in other teams a lot or other leagues a lot more in other sports. But I think in the NFL, you really could start pushing those because you we got enough money where we could have gave him a decent amount of guaranteed money to make him take the deal and then make those last two years more team friendly for us. And if it was a disaster, we can just let him go after this year or we could pick him up for two cheap years if he does really well. And so I think that those type of deals are going to come to the forefront more as we get into, uh, you know, the new age football and all those different things. Just because, again, a guy with injury history, you don't want to marry yourself to him. And three years is not bad, so I'm not uh, real upset. I actually like the deal a lot. I do think we ended up paying more than other people would have. But again, I'm not mad at that deal. And so, like I said in the last video, I'm fine bringing in Robinson if it's a decent deal. And so I'm happy with it. Uh, so then, uh, you know, also to further that, so to talk real quick about Allen Robinson, everybody want to hear about Allen Robinson. Um, so I thought I'd read a little bit uh, from my scouting report from 2014. So for all those people that kind of talked about, oh, man, you don't like Allen or you don't want Allen, blah, blah, blah. It's quite the opposite. Not only do I want Allen Robinson, and I know Allen Robinson, I can go all the way back to when he was drafted because that's what I do. I, I don't just sit here and say this. I scout drafts and I know football. So uh, looking at Allen Robinson, I, re- I remember pretty well liking him a lot coming out of the draft, and I know he wasn't getting a lot of hype. And that that's the other point that I'll get to. But I, I label him a four-star prospect. Uh, I tagged him as a sleeper and that turned out to be true so far, but excuse me, some of the things that I liked about him and I didn't think he had, um, top level, uh, top level speed, excuse me. He, uh, can accelerate quickly, but his top end speed isn't super fast. Uh, at least at the, of course, at the time he got out. Uh, but I thought he was with creative on his releases he was able to stem and stutter uh, and get off the jams at the line of scrimmage. And here's something interesting. Now, this is a while ago, but I gave him a five agility. So it's all out of five if you don't listen to my draft stuff. I gave him a five out of five agility and a five out of five route running, which is high praise for somebody that was over 220 pounds. So I said he's very shifty, very good hips, great plan and go, very good quickness. I thought... Just his overall ability to run routes was extremely uh, well for someone his size. Then the ball skills gave him a level four, and I think he's shown even more of that uh, in the league so far. Gave him a three and a five or three and a half out of hands, and said that he body cashed a lot, but uh, still had great ball skills. So that's kind of my uh, fit for him. Uh, definitely said again, he was a four star for me and a sleeper, somebody that could really produce a lot more than other people would say. But, you know, a guy with long arms, big hands, all around receiver that I thought can do a little bit of possession, can do a little bit of big play, can do a little bit of yak yards, somebody that I was really, uh, excited for. And so. That's kind of my scouting report on him. And as we look in the league, we see 
that his top attributes he's going to bring is a top level route runner for his size, like really great routes. And he can get separation, but I don't want people to mistake that he has a lot of speed. And he's not even really a big body. I see a lot of people saying he's a big body, 6'2". So he's a bigger receiver, definitely at uh, almost 220. But he isn't like a Mike Evans or anybody like that. So he's not, but he's still not a burner. But he gets open with his route running. And, of course, he has the red zone ability to go up and make uh, 50-50 catches. So that is kind of what we're looking at. And that brings me to one of the other points that I always try to tell fans is that while you might not think we need a certain position in the draft, always check it out. Always listen. And I have tell because I do this uh, and I do the draft stuff, I can tell a lot of Bears fans check out, well, we got Trubisky. I don't care about the quarterbacks. Or, you know, we got um, this person, so I don't care about the safeties. We got this, so I don't care about this. I only care about what the Bears need right now. And I that's understandable, but you never know when you're going to need somebody. And, you know, because this league isn't set in stone for just next year. It's always going to change as we go year to year. And so this is a perfect example of people – got to understand that you might not be looking to draft them now, but in three years or four years, that's going to be that top receiver or that top player that you are trying to get on your team. And so it's always funny to me how people really poo poo uh, players when they're young, but then all of a sudden can devote their whole off season to drooling over somebody when they're now a big name. And again, a lot of casual fans will feel okay. Okay, I'll just wait. Oh, they put up big numbers. Okay, he's a great player. Now I want him. And that's fine. That's surface level. But for me, it's gotta, you gotta be deeper than that. And so it's not, uh, in me to just sit around and wait to see somebody put up numbers and say, oh, now he's good. You gotta be able to have deeper talent than that. And I would hope the Bears have deeper talent than that and deeper scouting than that, I don't know. Right now, I honestly don't think we do, but we'll see kind of what we get. Uh, So, yeah, so as we go through this draft, it's important to kind of look at those names and um, hear what they are because those are the people you're going to be scrambling to look at four years from now. Well, let me go see his 40. Let me go see uh, what he did coming out or what, what was his highlights in his old team like because now all of a sudden you want him. And, I, you know, so it's funny to me. I think you should always stay in tune with kind of uh, what these young guys are doing. And that brings me to another point. And I'm just getting stuff off my chest, to be honest. But um, it was kind of poo-poo at me or other people – saying that in you know some people believe this but a lot of people poo poo it is that we got to get an established guy if we don't get them right now we we're going to be mediocre and i've said in the last video we don't have to get robinson and watkins that doesn't mean i don't want them it doesn't mean we have to get them no everyone's talking as if this is the last off season no there's going to be different situations down the road you don't get better by swinging at every um, every chance you get. You get better and you go long term when you swing at the right opportunities. And so Kirk Cousins is a great example. Everybody was just waiting for Kirk Cousins. And Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback, an above average to good quarterback. But since there no other quarterbacks available that's better than him, oh, well, we got to lose our minds and go all in on Kirk Cousins. That's not smart strategy. And I'm not knocking Kirk Cousins. I'm just saying, had there been two other players out there, Kirk Cousins would be nobody in these headlines. And so the fact that he's getting all the attention and people are trying to throw money at him, it's all because of the situation. It's not really because of the player. And so next year or the year before or whatever, Kirk Cousins would have been in a different category. And so my my thing is stop trying to act like the players are game changing or that they're they're pivotal to doing something when it's really more the situation pushing them up. Sammy Watkins and Allen Robinson off of ACL would be nowhere 
in the headlines in a decent year or good, a really good free agency year. They would be maybe third tier. But the fact that this year happens to be them on top, well, all the fans got to act like, well, we have to get them or it's never going to work. Stop. <laughs> Stop. That, that Just because they're the best of this group does not mean they're the best available in the league or that that's the only people we need to go after. It's not true. Again, happy we got Allen at a good deal. But this mindset in free agency uh, every year of we have to do this is not true. It's absolutely not true. And the Jags are a great example. So me talking about either getting younger guys, a group of young guys, or uh, finding some guys that fit the mold a little of, of what you're looking for and not chasing big names kind of get poo poo. But then people forget. How did the Jags get those guys? Jags went out and drafted Marquise Lee before Allen Robinson, and they drafted Allen Robinson, and they got Hearns as a uh, Allen Hearns as an undrafted free agent, and those were those three their three starters. Now Marquise Lee was hurt a little, and so he didn't play as much, but eventually those three became the Jacksonville's core, and so nobody poo pooed. You know, when they had three rookies out there taking up the mantle, they aggressively went for something and they got guys that they felt could fill the right roles. And now, uh, years later, you got some people wanting, um, some people going after Lee, but the Jags got them. And then you got all these people going after Allen Robinson and, and people, the same people sitting here saying, Oh man, we have to get Allen Robinson. You're stupid. We have to get him. Are the same people who ignored Allen Robinson coming out of the draft or the same people who didn't care when the Jacksonville brought out three young receivers. And so to sit here and keep telling me what we have to do is ridiculous. I watch football a long time. A lot of you have. It goes in cycles. There is nothing we have to do. What we have to do is pick the right times. It's their job to look at the upcoming free agency class next year and the year after that and to track who's going to be there and to look at the drafts, of course. Now, for them, Ryan Pace might have to do something because of his job, but us as fans, we got to stop acting like this has to happen or it's over. We're going to be Bears fans a long time. Bears will be here a long time. <laughs> we'll be able to see um, better situations come to the fold. And I think those smart players or the smart GMs and the smart teams are the ones that don't swing at every situation. They know when to go hard for the right situation and not just go at any situation because it's something we need right now. It's planning for the long term. So anyway, all that being said, I kind of talked about what Allen Robinson brings. Uh, It'll be interesting because Allen Robinson... um, is a bigger receiver, more of a uh, possession guy than a speed guy. Uh, definitely can make big plays. Definitely can play uh, make plays in the red zone. But I think his uh, best game is that uh, possession type stuff. Cam Meredith is a bigger type receiver too. Also not a burner by any means. Going to be more of a possession guy. And so now the question is, what do we need now? And f- to me, uh, I think we definitely going to need speed. I think the next target is going to be speed. Uh, a lot of people are talking about Albert Wilson and as a possible slot. And it, it's funny. Okay, so it's, a lot of people are like, we get Albert Wilson. He's a slot receiver. He didn't really play slot receiver for Kansas City. He was an outside guy for them. And so I don't know that you just plug him in a slot and it's that easy. It could be. I don't know. But uh, I just, based off what I know, I don't think that it's going to be that simple of a transition. And even then, Albert Wilson's not a burner. So what I think we're looking for is some real speed. Now, I will slow up on the DJ Moore stuff. Uh, DJ Moore is getting so much love because of his 40. But I watched the tape. And, and anybody that watched the tape wasn't that super in love with him. Uh, good player, but the speed was not there in games. He got no separation as an outside receiver. A lot better in the slot, no separation as an outside receiver. And some people are like, well, it's a 40, it's a 40, it's a 40. I've always said uh, track speed is not the same as uh, football speed for every player. 
And some people poo-poo that, but just look at it. Why would you rank DJ Moore so low, or why was he not talked about as a top receiver before his 40? It's because of what you saw on tape. So if you're going to take a 40-yard dash more into consideration than what you saw on tape, then be my guest. But if you could get him in the lower rounds, fine. I'm fine with that. Me more so, I'm, I got my eye on the guy called Anthony Miller. And I talked about this in my Bears receiving core video. Anthony Miller I like, but some true speed. A Christian Kirk is going to be tough to get and without picking him in the second round. Uh, it's a lot of good players that I would pick before Christian Kirk, but some true speed at the slot uh, to tr- stretch the seams is what we, I, I think, what we need to target. Now, the one intriguing prospect that's in the free agency is John Brown. John Brown, formerly of the uh, Cardinals. Now, I don't follow him, so I don't know if he's been injured or lost a step. But I do know that coming out in in his uh, big years, he was a straight burner for Carson Palmer. And so when you got bigger guys that are playing possession, uh, you're definitely going to do a lot with Shaheen and Trey Burden, which I'll get to. Uh, in, the, in the tight end seams, you need that opposite seam to be cleared out because what that's going to do is that's going to allow your outside receivers to now play underneath with their routes and not have a safety squat on them or a linebacker squat on them because you're stretching that seam to get that safety in that deep coverage out of there or the corner, whoever, and that allows your outside guy to work more underneath. And so uh, whether it's the tight end or a receiver, you want both of those seams to be occupied and to um, have a threat there that's going to basically open up your two bigger body or possession type receivers. And so that's something I think we're going to be targeting what we should look for. So John Brown, I'm fine with. Albert Wilson, possibly as well. Uh, Matt Nagy knows him uh, better than anybody, so he'll know. Uh, but also if you're talking about the draft, Anthony Miller, I think is a high level receiver that can do more than the slot, but I think he would absolutely kill in the slot. Christian Kirk might be a steep price and I'm not, I I like him. I'm not the huge, biggest fan of him, but I like him. And then DJ Moore, I would not spend a premium pick on. I would try to get him later in the rounds. Um, but yeah, you definitely want somebody in the slot that's going to stretch it, but Typically in the West Coast, we're going to want someone shorter that can uh, run those intermediate routes and those uh, short routes as well. Uh, I mean, taller guys can do it, but, you know, they're typically not as quick as somebody shorter in the slot. So after picking up Robinson and Burden, that's really what I'm kind of focusing on. Now, me, I'm counting Karen Robinson as the opposite starter. Some people aren't. I don't know what the Bears are thinking. I mean, they tendered him, so they're definitely going to try to make sure that he proves he can't came back from his injury. But the guy was undrafted. I mean, he's not making big money. He's not hurting the cap. I don't see why he shouldn't get his full chance. But in case we're not, then I think I want somebody uh, a little more traditional receiver, a little more six footish, uh with good speed. Because then, then we're talking about uh, speed on the outside, speed on the inside. And so now we can uh, interchange who's going intermediate and who's going deep and taking the top off. So I'm not saying like we need a burner like Will Fuller or anybody. That would be nice, to be honest with you. But somebody that can, um, you know, kind of like a Marcus Lee, actually. But he does a little bit of both with the slot. But somebody that can actually get in and out of those breaks in the intermediate, but also can run those deep digs and deep posts and uh, threaten the safety as well. So if Ken Robinson is going to be regulated to more of a receiver uh, four, receiver three, special package type guy, then we're going to have to start looking at somebody like that. Now, what we got left in the free agency, you got Moncrief, who definitely isn't a speed guy. He's more like uh, Cam. Now, Jordan Matthews has been up and down, but I think he could do it. Honestly, Jordan Matthews for a decent price would not be bad at all across from Allen Robinson. And you get your speedy guy in the slot, I think that would actually round it out pretty well. And then if you got Cam as a backup and someone gets hurt, I think Cam can step in and do some good things too. Uh, I will have to look at the rest of the list of the receivers, but if we're talking about the draft, which I will get to, I don't want to spoil it all right now, 
I'll get to the Bears draft needs and whatnot. But two guys I love that you might want to start looking at, Traquan Smith out of UCF, Michael Gallup out of Colorado State. I think they have the route running and explosion to play intermediate to deep. They're not burners, but they are like those 5'11", 6'1", type guys that can really run all those routes on the outside. So those are kind of lower tier uh, guys that I would love to get. And then, of course, an uh, equanimous uh, St. Brown from Notre Dame would love to get him, too. So those are kind of some ideas of what I'm looking at, uh, even not specific players, but again, what type of receiver we should be looking for. And so with A-Rob, it, is, it will be interesting um, to see kind of what Matt Nagy has in store for him, which brings me to another point. All these people telling me you know what Matt Nagy's running, you don't. You do not. And unless I missed some big uh, expo of his offense, you do not know what he's running, and it is driving me insane. People telling me, oh, he's going to do this. Oh, we, Matt Nagy doesn't want this, or this is what Matt Nagy, how do you know? Do, or, do y'all have Matt Nagy on, on speed dial? Please let me know, because here's the facts. The only thing you can base that off of is what you've seen in Kansas City. Now, what they ran in Kansas City could be 100% what we run. It absolutely is a possibility, but none of you know that for a fact. And the reason people keep saying this is because it's surface level. People are really surface level when it comes to football unless you are, you know the X's and O's. Because to sit here and say that, oh, you know, I saw Kansas City offense, so that's going to be our offense. That's not true. That offense was not created by Matt Nagy. There's parts added by him, but that is Andy Reid's offense. And yes, Andy Reid is his mentor, and that's the person that taught him. But best believe you do not take the entire offense, defense or offense. Trust me, I've, there's never been a time me or anybody else I know or met said, yeah, that was my mentor and I just took his whole playbook and that's what we do. No, you take the best of what they taught you. There's definitely going to be themes and there's going to be concepts and philosophies that are similar or the same, but you're not going to take the entire offense with you. There's going to be things you take and things you add and change. And so not only that, but offenses are completely different. Just, I think a lot of times fans talk about what they see in terms of run-pass uh, ratio or pass-area ratio. And they'll say, well, they're a pass-heavy offense that likes to take deep shots. Or they're a pass-heavy and they like to play in the intermediate. Or they're more of a screen-type team or they're a run-heavy type. Like, that's what people think an offense is. And that's part of it, but that's a, a chunk of it. There's a lot more to it than that. And so for you to tell me you know what personnel groupings he's going to run, if you can tell me you know what formations he's going to run on red zone, if you can tell me which route or, or which routes he wants his Y receiver he wants the X or the Z to run or have the slot run, if you're going to tell me you know what concepts he wants in a second down situation, he knows the high-low percentage, if you're going to sit here and tell me you know the blocking scheme he wants to run with his running backs out of shotgun versus out of two-back versus out of 21 personnel, I would love to talk to you. Please sit down and tell me because I I must have missed that. I didn't know that Matt Nagy put his whole business out there. You don't know. I'm sorry. You don't know unless you know Matt Nagy or somebody close on the team. Um Yes, you might look at Kansas City and have an idea of how he want to use things, but he could have completely different ideas about philosophy on when and where to use certain people in his own offense. It's not going to be a mirror copy of Kansas City. It might look like one. It possibly could. But all I can say is right now, nobody knows for certain except the Bears staff. So can we please stop telling me how much y'all know what Matt Nagy is going to do? Lastly, <laughs> Trey Burton. Uh, again, I said it before. Who cares about Trey Burton? Um, and I don't mean that to say that he can't be anything. But it's like people made it seem like he was some top flight um, player that we had to get. Up until this point, Trey Burton 
for whatever physical skills he got and for however it matches with what we might want. He has up, excuse me, up to this point been a tight end two at best for Philly and most of the time a tight end three. And so we say, oh, he's athletic. He can do this and that. That's fine. Yes. For us, he could be a tight end one. He could be a big piece. But up until this point, I don't know why people, again, act like Trey Burton was the prized possession that we had to get. <laughs> and so fine, fine. I'm happy we got him. Um, the deal, I think, was about $32 million for four years. And honestly, I would have to kind of look at other deals and numbers to see if we overpay. But again, with the Bears cap space, um, it doesn't look egregious. Now, for somebody that's been a tight end two most of their life, or at best, $32 million for a four-year deal, that's a little up there. Probably more than I would want to pay. Um, and the Bears had a cap space to be aggressive, though. So I'm not going to punch them too bad in any regular year. I wouldn't have liked that deal. But we got a lot of roster spots. We got some money to burn. So I'm cool with it. Uh, that brings him in with Shaheen. So that makes some flexibility to kind of the things we can do. Uh, but I'm interested. I mean, honestly, like I said, we got bigger body and Cam, bigger body and, um, A Rob. Uh, we'll figure out who the slots are and whatnot. But basically you got four targets on the roster right now. And all of those targets are kind of, uh, big ball possession type. So, uh, I'm, I'm interested in kind of what we're going to do. Uh, now, as much as Travis Kelsey is a monster receiver, people really get it twisted. He blocked a lot for Kansas City, uh, especially in a lot of the, uh, H-back looks that they like to do with their college type runs and RPOs. So definitely Shaheen's still going to have to get better at blocking. And Trey Burton is definitely going to have to uh, bring his blocking hat as well. So if that's, if that's what we're going to do similarly in, in the run game, I would expect so because so much of this league is H back heavy with some of those runs as we start to cycle back to power run. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how Matt Nagy, uh, calls this offense, but, uh, I'm cool with Trey Burton. I just didn't understand why people were making this like such a need. We didn't need him. Uh, it's cool to get another target, but I, I wouldn't sit here and say that I'm, I'm crying over him or anything. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say. Said a lot of different things, but, uh, the best thing is to hear what you guys got to say. Go to the comment section. We got Allen Robinson. Are you finally happy now? Does that mean uh, the Bears are going to Super Bowl? Because I don't think so. But definitely go to the comment section. Let me know what you think about the deal, the numbers. What do you think about that Sammy Watkins was our number one choice, actually? that's That's been uh, told to a lot of people from inside that Sammy Watkins was the number one choice. But, of course, I'm sure they're happy they got Allen Robinson. Um, but what do you think about the numbers and all this good stuff and how the uh, receiving core could fill out? What do y'all think about Cam uh, Meredith? Did I say Cam Robinson earlier? I meant Cam Meredith, my bad. Uh, so go, go to the comment section, let me know, thumbs up, subscribe, share it around, and remember, stay up and bear down.